Guys, I was sitting at my computer last night and just searching for news from Iceland and I found something that while I was reading it, it just came to me. I'm like, whoa, you know, we're listening to everything that they're doing to fight off these lava flows at the Reykjanes Peninsula to protect the Schwarzenki power plant, the Blue Lagoon, and also Grindavik. And we know it has worked quite well so far. These defense walls that they're building, they're trying to cool it off with lava. And you know, we know they said one or two at the most more eruptions in a location that is unfavorable when it comes to lava flow towards Schwarzenki or Grindavik, they say we cannot defend it anymore. But for some reason kind of it's probably human we tend to think yeah it'll work out right i mean i've always been thinking yeah i think you know this doesn't look good it doesn't look good but when i read what i found out it it really just it came to me it was clear to me and it was a little bit depressing that's why i thought i want to tell you because really when i say it came to me is that i think it's over for Sorsengi and maybe even the Blue Lagoon. And uh, I will tell you why. They know that another eruption is coming. The last eruption just ended and we know that the land rise underneath Swartzangi, where the magma chamber is located, has also started again. So we will probably see something again, maybe end of January, maybe February. We, we don't know because this the last eruption came earlier than estimated. So the thing is, on December 9th, the civil defense has concluded or has initiated a project to further raise the defense walls around Swartzengi, around the Swartzengi power plant and around the Blue Lagoon because the last eruption <laughs> and one of my viewers said that really, really well, um, you know, the lava flow in the early hours of that eruption was flowing over the Blue Lagoon parking lot, completely destroying it, completely burning down a maintenance building for the bus drivers. And my viewer said, well, the lava is parking at the Blue Lagoon. The lava is parking at the Blue Lagoon parking lot while the Lagoonies are swimming in the Blue Lagoon. And that is so true. And that sounds as it is. The lava is already parking there. It's just waiting to get in. So now they have initiated a project to raise the defense walls. And you might ask, well, Silky, why are you then so depressed that it's over? Why are you saying it's over when they're raising the defense walls? Well, I get to that very, very shortly. Um, of course, they want to raise it to protect it against future lava flows because this time they have seen how critical it was. And not even in the last eruption, the eruption, two eruptions before that, on the last day of the eruption, and they were lucky that it was the last day, the lava was breaching the defense walls at the Schwarzenegger power plant. Luckily, at a spot where the lava that was breaching it and that was flowing quite fast was still far enough to, away from infrastructure. But that lava that was coming at the Blue Lagoon, had it breached the defense wall, would have flown into the Blue Lagoon right away because there is not much dif distance between the defense wall and the Blue Lagoon. So no chance to build a second wall to divert it anywhere else or something like this. Um, but you have to, when you listen now, the height of these defense walls, what they're wanting to do. I think this was the point when I realized they will lose this fight, in my opinion. So listen to this. These defense walls that we're talking about, they're located north, northeast, northwest of the Swartzengi power plant and the Blue Lagoon. And they want to raise these defense walls another four to six meters that's another 13 to 20 feet okay if you hear that well yeah okay how high were they at the beginning four meters eight meters 16 meters well listen to this guys i don't know how you feel when you hear that raising the defense walls another 13 to 20 feet that would put the height of the defense walls their final height to approximately 
14 to 27 meters in feet. That is 45 to 90 feet. 45 to 90 feet, that's like a maybe eight to nine story building. You really have to imagine how high that is. That's a little mountain. That is not a berm anymore. A little pile of dirt or rocks. This is massive, extraordinary massive. I mean, imagine this. And when I saw this, I realized, well, how long do they want to do this? Because the lava keeps coming and these lava flows are flowing on top of each other and they're getting higher and higher and higher. And they have breached the fence walls that were already 50, 60 feet high. Not the whole defense wall will probably have that height. It's it's depending on where the section is, where they, their new lava flow models indicate that a breach is most likely. But we have to say in the last eruption, nobody estimated that it would flow that far west on day one in the first few hours and threaten the Blue Lagoon so, so massively. So you can do the lava flow models all you want. This volcanic system has proven us that it says, hold my beer, I'm doing something completely different. And then we have the same problem towards Grindavik. You know, the land is slightly sloping down towards the sea and that's where the lava is flowing if it's in an in a spot that is not good if it's further south the last eruptions were all like rather further north or right where every where they always have been right so they they did not go too far south at the moment so and as it is with the blue lagoon we know it's open again right um the access road was completely destroyed by lava they have to bring in through other areas they don't have they lost like 350 parking spot so they're they're busing them in from grindavik people need to go to grindavik and then th there's shuttles so that's why this press release says but we know what the reality is right this press release says the project to raise the defense walls that is being done to protect the power plant they're not mentioning the blue lagoon and we know that they never hardly do that because they don't want bad press they don't want the public especially tourists in other countries to think that there might be any risk and it's the same if you look at their website there's they're talking about the Blue Lagoon is in a seismically active area, yada, yada, yada. They're not really saying it's sitting on top of a magmatic chamber that is causing all these eruptions. And there's constant lava flows that are threatening to like overflow everything, right? I mean, we've discussed this to the max. This is not what this video is about. Check out their website if you're interested in that and, and make up your own opinion um, about that. So they say to protect Swartzangi, but we know they have to protect the Blue Lagoon. That's their money maker as well, because the last eruption was mostly threatening the Blue Lagoon and not really the power plant that much. So they say after every single event and they mean eruption that they have to reassess the situation yes they have because that lava carpet is building up and the last eruption has really built up a large lava carpet over a large area so sometimes this can be an advantage you know for the next eruption that there are natural barriers so that the lava will flow somewhere else but you know if you have such a big lava carpet equally spread the whole land is elevated already, like 10 meters, 16 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters in some areas. So 100 feet, even higher around the craters. So when I heard that, and then I thought about this, and in light of the fact that there is absolutely no sign that these eruptions will end in the near future, they can last for decades, they can last for centuries. There's even the possibility of simultaneous eruptions. I mean, right now it's rumbling in other areas in Iceland, but other areas in Iceland will not affect the power plant. And that's what we're talking about right now. But in light that there might be 10 more, 20, 30 more of this, you can't build defense walls skyscraper high. So how long can you do this? 
And that's why I felt, you know, it's going to be over eventually. That's what I felt because the thing is, they have already created a low spot by building the defense walls around Swartzengi and Grindavik, but especially Swartzengi because there were more lava flows. Swartzengi, the power plant and the Blue Lagoon are now a low spot. Because think about defense walls as high as 90 feet. So inside, it's lower. It's 90 feet lower. And probably, you know, from where the lava carpet is, you know, it's not that these defense walls are 90 feet high and the lava comes flowing at zero. The lava probably comes flowing at 70 feet, 80 feet, depends on where it is. So because the lava carpet is already there, it's already elevated. So you don't have 90 feet um, as a barrier where the lava needs to build up 90 feet. No, the lava is here. The defense wall is here now they increase the defense wall but the lava is catching up with each eruption so and they said that they said that already a few months ago we can only increase the defense walls that much and now they're already using the existing lava carpets once it's it's solidified a little bit and the the last time they cooled it down with water so that they could use the lava carpet to build defense walls on these lava carpets, right? So I think eventually it's going to be over. That's my opinion. I mean, maybe they can use the existing lava carpets and build defense walls further away, but then where is the lava going? I don't think this will hold up forever. And they already said, I repeat it, one or more eruptions and they might not be able to protect Swartzengi and the Blue Lagoon or Grindavik if it's flowing towards Grindavik. So what they're doing right now, yeah, they're preparing for the next one. But um, it's just a feeling, guys. Let me know what you think, because what, right now this project requires a lot of material that they have to bring there again. It's very, very cost intensive. Um, they need 250,000 cubic meters of material to build it. That is 8.8 .8 million cubic feet. The estimated cost right now is about 9 to 11 million US dollars. Overall, they already have spent 72 million dollars for that. And, you know, Iceland is not a big country and they have already spent, you know, all the money from their disaster insurance to buy out the people of Grindavik to buy the homes. So there's no money left in there. But their argument is that they're saying, well, let's say the power plant is damaged and we lose it only for a few days because there's some minor damage. We're not ta even talking about a total loss. They say if we lose it for just a few days. The associated costs will run into billions of Icelandic kronas per day. So life and business operations in Reykjanes, in this area, are dependent on this power plant. So I really, really think, you know, building the defense walls, yes, but they already should think about a plan B. And, you know, eventually I'm reporting about so many volcanoes that had eruptions with a magma chamber underneath where eventually once the magma chamber wasn't refilled, the whole space, that empty space and around that magma chamber collapsed, forming calderas. So what are the chances that one day whenever this might happen underneath Fort Sangi? Because the crust is getting brittle by you know, lifting it up, subsiding, lifting it up, subsiding, lifting it up, subsiding. That's the issue that we have in Campi Flicre in Italy. There was like a Brady seismic phase, land was rising in the 1980s, then subsiding, now it's rising again. The caprock layer that keeps the lid on the crust has lost two thirds of its stability. Um, we haven't heard anything from Iceland about the crust that is on top of that magma chamber, about the stability, about a potential loss of stability, what is happening there. You know, the more brittle it gets, there are chances that magma could find its way right straight up to the top. Scientists have 
said that, that this is a possibility with not a high likelihood. That's what they're saying because there is an open piping tunnel system into the Sutnuka Crater series where we see all these eruptions, but you can't rule it out. What if that system clogs up? Who knows? So overall, I think they will lose this fight eventually, maybe not in the next eruption, maybe not in the one after, maybe 10 more, who knows, but their own estimate from one to two already tells us something, right? And now Eddie's angry at me, he wants me to stop. So guys, stay safe wherever you are. And I hope to see you very, very soon in one of my other videos. And if you wanna find out why I'm in an RV, check out my playlist, RV Travel to Save My Dog's Life. And if you want to support um, this channel and at the moment Apollo's enormous vet bills, please go to my buymeacoffee.com site slash silky um, and buy us a coffee if you like um, or just register for free to follow and get an email if there's another eruption happening. Um, the link is in the description of this video or you use the, that barcode here, whatever you like and thank you so much for your support that you have already given us uh, with the supers here and with the coffees guys. Apollo and I with a Thank you. And Eddie, I, I'm listening to you. He probably wants some food or wants to go for a walk. So guys, be safe. Bye-bye.